Hi, UVic students. Um, my name is Emily, and I'm your UVSS Director of Campaigns and Community Relations. We're here for another interview with an MLA. Um, I'm joined by Lana Popham, who is your MLA for Saanich South. Um, Lana, thank you for joining me today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's a treat to be here. Um, so I've been the MLA since 2009 when I was first elected with the New Democrats. Uh, I spent two long terms in opposition and then last uh, election I became the Minister of Agriculture, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. Fantastic. Um, and this is just another little reminder for students to, to get out and vote um, during the advanced polls. And that's October 15th to the 21st or on general voting day on the 24th. Yeah, it's coming up fast. It's starting to go by very quickly. So there's lots of opportunities to vote. There's um, advanced uh, polls will open up, as you've said, but you could also contact Elections BC and go in uh, to the office, the Elections BC office, and arrange to a vote, a vote through them directly. So there's lots of ways to do it, as long as you do it. Yeah, totally. Great. Um, so again, we're going to do some rapid fire questions. Um, what is a book that really made an impact on your life? Well, I, so my partner and I have reading hour and it's often the case that he'll sit down and read uh, something very uh, deep and intellectual and I will look through cookbooks any time of day. <laughs> Excellent. Um, do you have a guilty pleasure TV show? Uh, any cooking show. I love Anthony Bourdain, so his series was wonderful for me to watch. I love people watching people who are passionate about food. Awesome. Um, do you have a favorite coffee shop in your riding? There's a little coffee shop at the Beach House in Cordova Bay where you can grab a coffee and go sit on the beach. Amazing. I love that spot as well. Um, so yeah, students uh, overwhelmingly understand that the climate emergency requires both an immediate and an effective response from all levels of government. Um, I'm wondering what specific actions you'll advocate for to ensure that BC meets the required milestones of at least a 45% reduction in emissions by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Uh, absolutely. So this is a concern for students and I believe that it has become more and more of a concern for other generations as well. And so uh, as a political party, you have to take it seriously. So words don't cut it anymore and uh, it's really all about actions. And so we recognize the 45% reduction by 2050 is a required milestone. Um, we developed Clean BC with Dr. Andrew Weaver, who is a renowned climate change scientist. Uh, and with Clean BC, we put an investment of about $1.3 billion so far into that plan. So it is the most ambitious plan in North America. Um, but as uh, we know that the, the effects of climate change are escalating, a lot and so it takes all of us brainstorming to figure out exactly uh, what we can do to address it so there are the, um, the the ways that we all we all know we have to reduce our emissions but there's also other ways that it can be addressed and as Minister of Agriculture I'm really happy to say that we are going to be creating a regenerative agriculture network which will have the capacity we believe to sequester carbon out of the air so there needs to be a combination of things. Great thank you um, and this was a question when we asked students that came up a lot about um, oil and gas and sort of LNG subsidies in BC mm -hmm. they have been rising over the last couple of years and I'm wondering um, yeah, what's your your stance um, on those subsidies? Sure and so uh, most of us know about the LNG project that was approved it's a large project it had to uh, fit under the regulations of Clean BC but on top of that we've committed to reviewing the subsidies or otherwise known as royalties uh, and we need, we believe that we need to do that through a climate change and environmental lens. So we're committing to do that if reelected. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so students have also expressed a really strong desire to create a more socially just province um, and current measures by municipalities to address systemic racism and police forces um, simply mm -hmm. haven't solved the problem. Um, and we also are seeing economic 
inequities and marginalized groups that continue to create generational challenges for children, families, and communities. Um, yeah, I'm wondering what action you'll take um, on systemic racism in BC, either in, in the area of policing or in communities in general. Sure. So um, uh, over the last uh, few years, the, I think, um, public realization that there has been such inequality, there has been entrenched racism in institutions that, that we are all very familiar with. Uh, we've all begun to recognize that in, I think, a more proactive way. And so you see the riots on the streets, you see the protests calling for equal rights and, and for uh, just general institutions to start addressing some of the stuff that's been accepted for so long. So I think with the, the elevation of education specifically on that, um, you see uh, political parties trying to figure out the best way to politically address that. Is it through legislation? Is it through regulation? So what we've done is that we've called for the Police Act here in British Columbia to be reviewed with a lens of systemic uh, racism. And so that committee was struck over the summer and it will continue to do its work. We expect a report out by the end of the spring. And with that will come recommendations on how to specifically uh, address the Police Act. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have costs like tuition and housing that continue to rise while students' incomes have dropped significantly during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, I'm wondering how you plan to tackle the, the rising costs of education for post-secondary students. Absolutely. So um, I think when you look at the cost of a student going to school, there are different parts of it. And so the tuition side, we've eliminated interest on student loans, which I think is a very good thing. I went to school at UBC back in the uh, early 90s and I went through with student loans that had interest on them. So if uh, they had been interest free on provin the provincial side, uh, that would have been a very good advantage for me to take, uh, I think, and it would have made a, a huge difference in the affordability of my own education. Um, we've also, it, it's really important with education, people talk about it being a tool to level the playing field for everyone. But if you can't afford to get into the institution, then it's not gonna level the playing field at all. And so we eliminated tuition completely for former youth in care, which I'm really proud of. That was a really important step. But we've also addressed uh, housing on campuses. So I think there's 700 uh, student residences coming to UVic. Uh, in the next while, and we've done 2,400 beds across the province for student housing. This is going to alleviate some of the pressure on the rentals uh, off campus and uh, allow more student housing to, to be more affordable. Um, but there's a lot of other things we've done. We've uh, eliminated MSP. We're trying to take a look at um, student affordability, but also with a more holistic lens. So just affordability in general. We know that um, every student's lives are different. Some have kids, some are single parents. So being able to get childcare when you're a student is really important. Uh, just everything like that. So I think our mandate overall has been to make life more affordable in BC and we certainly have focused in on students. Thanks for that. Um, so students make up the largest uh, demographic of transit users in our region. And I'm wondering um, if you support uh, altering the, the Transit Act to allow for a student representative to have a voting seat um, on transit commissions in BC. So our local example would be the Victoria Regional Transit Commission. Absolutely. So um, I worked with my colleague Rob Fleming, who represents Victoria Swan Lake, specifically on bus, bus pass-ups that were happening continually for students going to UVic and Camosun. Uh, and we know that students are the biggest demographic to use transit generally and regularly. And so I think it's a really great idea and it makes a lot of sense to me. Great. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so Four years after Bill 23, which was the Sexual Violence and Misconduct Policy Act, um, 
we continue to hear from other student representatives that many post-secondary institutions haven't implemented effective sexual violence and misconduct policies, um, largely due to a lack of, of resourcing um, and um, a, a sense of like a lack of, of, of oversight and, and guidance with this particular policy. Um, and I'm wondering if you would support the creation and regulation of minimum standards and potentially streamlined funding um, to support these policies across mm. post-secondary institutions. Yeah, so uh, another very important topic for campuses, we know that one in five, cho uh, one in five women will experience sexualized violence uh, while studying at a post-secondary institution. And that's, uh, it's, it's shocking information, but that's the way it is. And um, we've done a lot of work to make sure that there's uh, policies that have to be implemented into post-secondary. Not everybody has done that, but we're working with them to make sure that we've got coverage over the entire province. But we also, in 2019, we invested $700,000 to respond to sexualized violence on campus. And so um, that is coupled with a brand new $10 million investment to support emergency sexual assault responses. So there are, there are many ways to go about it. It does need to be a policy that's entrenched on campus. But also I think what's really important is for us all to talk about it and to normalize that language. And we've seen Parliamentary Secretary Mitzi Dean uh, being very proactive in that way. And so we don't want that stat to be shocking and for people to be hearing about it for the first time. We want people to understand that it happens and we want people to be proactive on how to stop it from happening. So um, I know I, I'm very aware of uh, the happenings on campus from when I went to school and um, it was more of a secret. You didn't want to talk about it back then, but I think we're talking about it now. That coupled with funding to support support the changes on campus is going to be the way that we stop that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for all your answers today, Lana. Um, I'm wondering if, if students want to follow up with you in any capacity, is there a way to, to contact you or get involved with your campaign? Absolutely. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. There's, you can just direct message me. I'm one of the MLAs who still does my own social media. So you'll be getting a hold of me, actually. Um, and I just hope that people will come out and vote. We need the voting numbers to be up. Um, it's very important for our democracy, regardless of who you're voting for. But I'd appreciate your vote. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.